Today, we are thrilled to chat with New York Times bestselling author Heather Graham about her chilling new A Thousand and One Dark Night story, All Hallows Eve, a crew of hunters novella. The story is set in Salem on Halloween, so what could be more terrifying than that? Um, we are all about scary stories here at Book Trip, so let's get started. So before we begin our questions, can you tell us a little bit more about All Hallows Eve, Heather? All Hallows Eve takes place in Salem, and it is um, it's kind of about, <laughs> about a house I've actually been in, which isn't really in Salem. But it's a wonderful place. It was a mortuary that people opened as a haunted house and has some of the most phenomenal um, audiotronics and just all kind of creatures, you know, that are motion activated. And then, of course, some that aren't motion activated. But a uh, good haunted house is one of the creepiest places in the world. Uh, but in this particular haunted house, they come across corpses that are actually real. Bad things happen. <laughs> That's creepy, super creepy. I love Halloween. I just wanted to know if you're as much of a fan as I am. <laughs> I am a huge fan, and I was very lucky this Halloween. Um, I, for uh, my entire life, I've loved New Orleans, and I've gone and spent, I spent a great deal of time there. And I have, I've been doing something called Writers for New Orleans for about 10 years. It's strictly a benefit conference, and, and people come and just pay the cost of food, and we have, we have good things going on. New Orleans, however, is actually in very good shape right now. Um, you know, kind of, they, they still have their problems, but they're the same problems they've had. But um, one of my friends that I have made there, is a young lady who worked for Anne Rice for years and years, and she runs the Anne Rice Fan Club. And every year, right around Halloween, she has what she calls the Undead Con, uh, which is a writing con part of it. And then she has the Anne Rice Vampire Lestat Ball, which was Friday wow. night. And uh, through her, I went to the Wiccan Ball on Saturday night, which is ball. And then on Sunday night, I got to go to a voodoo initiation. So it was... Um, <laughs> This was a particularly phenomenal Halloween for me. That sounds amazing. It, absolutely, it's just it's just great. It's so much fun. They are they get so into uh, very the houses. Some of the houses in the French Quarter are they've got skeletons crawling all over them. You know, spider webs all over the facade, and they're the old um, you know Spanish. But it actually was Spanish area when most of it was made. Though I mean since wrong when most of the houses were erected that are there now uh, some are still from the earlier French and some are from later French but uh, there's the, the historic houses have such an air of uh, I heard somebody describe it once as decaying elegance about them to begin with that it's just incredibly spooky and wonderful and um, just a wonderful place to be at Halloween as is Salem exactly. Salem can be very very creepy yes mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I do love Salem and I was wondering, um, did you, have you traveled to Salem? It sounds like you have. And did you do any research on Salem and just as the setting for the book? I've done research in Salem. I've used Salem many times. Um, the, the crew characters, Jenna and Sam, uh, met in Salem uh, when they became, uh, I believe she was already crew of hunters. He later joins. Um, but they, um, they met there on a different case. There's just something about Sam. It's really funny, too. Just by sheer uh, happenstance, I wound up watching Arthur Miller's Crucible again today. And it, there's the city is just so rich in that history. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard for us to fathom now what in God's name could have gone on, yes. uh, where they let this terrible thing happen or believed enough in a devil that they could believe in spectral evidence. So when you go to Salem, you have the history to begin with, the uh, just amazing things they have to do in Salem, the different museums, and not, and not just with the witchcraft. They have seafaring, <coughs> excuse me, they have all kinds of things that, uh, mm -hmm. that are just fascinating and wonderful to find out more about. And then, of course, it's just one of those uh, cities, too, with the incredible old buildings, and you've got mm -hmm. the House of the Seven Gables itself, and burying grounds that are tremendously, I, you know, I, I shouldn't, I don't know if haunting is the right word, but they're, 
there's it's kind of like standing on the field at Gettysburg. There's just something there, something that you feel. Mm -hmm. There's a really good bookstore there too. Speaking of, you know, books. <laughs> I think it's called there Wicked is. Good Books. Actually, there are several. Yeah. Books. Yes. yes. <laughs> Wicked Good Books. Yeah. Good. Stuff. There are several though. There are a number of them that you yeah. can get to. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, um, when you're looking. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say when you're looking for your witchcraft, definitely they've got they've got almost anything you could possibly want to find yeah. out. It's you exactly. will find it in the stores there. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, now, the last time that we chatted with you for um, our After Dark, it was for when Irish eyes are haunting. So it's been a while. So what have you been up to since then? Any book signings, author, you know, conferences? What have you kind of been working on and and doing? I have, oh God, um, <laughs> yes, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I love everything I do. So I belong to romance writers. I belong to horror writers. I belong to mystery writers and I belong to thriller writers. Mm -hmm. And I believe all of them have had a conference. We now have something down at another great place. If anybody wants to go for Halloween, Key West, Florida. Uh, so we now have a mystery, I think it's called Mystery Fest Key West which is a really wonderful small conference because it is such a, a tight knit community. When you're down there, the sheriff of the whole county shows up to speak, the chief of police shows up to speak. Um, yeah. and, and it's just, again, Key West is one of those places that is, it's bizarre and wonderful and it was peopled by everybody and has just great creepy stories actually. Yeah. Really um, cool. Wonderful creepy stories. Yep. There's um, Robert the doll is a big one. That's, Robert the Doll, yep, yep. They're great. Elena de Hoyos so is my favorite. Pardon? They're, yeah, that yeah. one's crazy too. Their graveyards are just insane Absolutely. too. The graveyard, yeah. Well, it's very much, it's funny because I, two of the cities I love are very similar because uh, it has the graveyard in the center and they kind of have stacked coffins instead of the mausoleum, the like little houses you see in New Orleans. Exactly. And it's because they did have to move a lot of them mm -hmm. when a hurricane went by, I believe it was in the 1850s, bodies washed down Duval Street. So yeah. they had to uh, get them up where they could bury them without them popping up all the time. Exactly. Um, so that's the one thing. And and they, have again, I think it's actually supposed to be one of the largest conglomeration mm -hmm. of Victorian houses in the United States. Oh, wow. So there's beautiful architecture. Mm -hmm. um, I always think like... Uh, New Orleans has the Mississippi, and when you're down in Key West, you have all kinds of water sports. So you yeah. just have to kind of choose your water, you know, yeah. what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, your main characters in this book, Jenny Duffy and Samuel Hall, are part of the crew. So for those who might not be familiar with the books, what exactly is the crew? Can you kind of tell us a little bit about that? The crew of hunters began years ago in New Orleans in a book mm -hmm. called Phantom Evil. And I think this is, I believe, this just completed the fourth or fifth year of crew. I, I hate to admit it, I can't even remember. But there's uh, the first set, we always hit on something. The first set was Phantom Evil, Heart of Evil, The Evil Inside, and Sacred Evil. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember the next year. I, can't, I had an unspoken and uninvited, mm -hmm. which was kind of funny because we called it the un-year. Uninvited, <laughs> unspoken, un I think I just lost my last on, <laughs> but every year there, there's been a, a set that goes with them. And the last books out were The Silenced, um, The Forgotten, and The Hidden. Mm -hmm. So next year they all take place on cruise ships. Okay. So they will be <laughs> Final Journey, yeah. um, Haunted Destiny, which of course Destiny and Journey being the names of the ships and I can't believe it again I just forgot the second title in there but they all there's a lot, lot of fun they all take a place lot of books things. to remember <laughs> um now can you tell us more about Jenny and Samuel like kind of you know what type of personalities they have how they come together in this in this new adventure that they're going on well they're they <coughs> god excuse me I don't know why I'm coughing they um they start off together because they met they are both from Salem, mm -hmm. and uh, he was going back because it was uh, kind of time to close up his parents' house. He was mm -hmm. an attorney in Boston, and she had gone um, to help uh, with an, a different situation. But there's a 
house. A, it's a fictional house. Right. In Salem where uh, hundreds of years ago, a family was completely chopped up with axes. Mm-hmm. And uh, all of a sudden it's happened again. And when Sam comes into town, he stops in the road before he gets there. And there is a young man just literally covered in blood. And he's kind of, he's, he's a little bit slow. He's not really quite there. Mm-hmm. And he, you find out he'd been living in the same house and he had allegedly just hacked his family to death. So they're trying to find out. They, they don't, they don't believe he's done it. Je- Jenna comes back really to see her uncle, who's a great guy, mm-hmm. uh, was almost a priest and he works with children. And he's very anxious that people believe that this young man didn't do it because of course he doesn't believe it himself. And then you get all the characters in town. Mm -hmm. Uh, the very different characters in town because um, Salem does have the same things the United States has. You know, it has a huge conglomeration of Wiccans, of course, thanks to Lori Cabot. Um, It also has a lot of, you know, Christians and it has Jews and Muslims and Asians. I mean, it has everybody else in the world too, uh, living with this incredible history and everybody has their own agenda. You know, the shopkeepers, what are we going to do? And the, uh, people who have nothing to do with, you know, the downtown area or the tourism and are just living their daily lives. You have realtors worried about things and uh, <laughs> they they wind up dealing with a great deal of the personalities currently in town. Yep. Many of them are centric. <laughs> um, yes, very eccentric. Yeah. And who would you fan cast Jenny and Samuel as? Are there any actors, actresses that you think would be perfect Ooh, to play them? Uh, hmm. A tough one. Hmm. Well, I have a daughter who is an actress, and I would have immediately cast her as Jenna. But uh, <laughs> her name is China Sky. She's been in a number of things. Uh, let's see. If I were not, I'm trying to think because they're. Hmm. Hmm. What's Sam be? I'm, tra- <laughs> I'm going blank on actors I like. <laughs> I can't believe them. I, I can't think of titles or actors. Well, you know, all I can think of right now is because I was just watching The Crucible. I just keep seeing Daniel Day Lewis in my mind's eye. I <laughs> so love it. I don't, I don't know if he would be, <laughs> he'd be I don't know amazing. if he would be right at this particular time. Yeah. A young there are a lot of, um, I think my favorite working actress is Kate Blanchett. I don't know if she would be actually right for the part. Um, who else do I? Well, I would love to put, um, absolutely love Sean Bean. I would love to put him in there somewhere and I wouldn't even kill him. I'd let him be a character who lived. <laughs> the boy who so, lived. Um, Wonderful. I don't know. I'd love to hear who who uh, people thought should be them. It would that would be interesting. If anyone has any have opinions, a... please send them through. <laughs> we need fan casting. Always fun to do. <laughs> <laughs> now you've written in many different genres: historical, paranormal. You know, um, what are, are there a few things that you've learned while you know doing any types of research for historical stuff? Um, you know, that you found surprising. Anything that you stumbled across? <laughs> over the years? I think there are, there are all kind. I mean, h- history is things that have really happened and people who have really lived are far more fascinating or interesting than anything we're going to make up. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm working on one now that takes place in St. Francisville, Louisiana, which is about 20 minutes north of Baton Rouge. And I, I just thought it was fascinating because it's based on a story that happened, there was a right. Union gunboat shelling the bluffs around St. Francisville. We have a dog visiting us. Hi. And, um, <laughs> oh. hi. Hi, Ozzy. Hi, hi, buddy. Ozzie. Oh, my God, so cute. Um, are you cute? Yeah. <laughs> You're cute sometimes. <laughs> but uh, in, in this case, the Union commander had gotten a terrible fever, and in the fever, he shot and killed himself. Mm-hmm. And his fellow officers were just horrified. They didn't want to just throw his body in the Mississippi. And so under a flag of truce, they went up to Grace Church on the bluffs, and they spoke with uh, the Confederate soldiers there and asked if anybody was a Mason. They were all Masons, belonged to the Masonic Lodge. And they went and they found a Mason, and they asked if he could be buried in the churchyard. And they agreed, and they stopped fighting for a day to bury this man and I thought my god that's just such a great story you know it's uh nice to hear that uh you know I mean you hear all kinds of great I mean not it's hard to hear great things about a war but I mean you do hear great things about the people in the war how they would um pass notes because you don't stop being friends and you don't stop loving and caring about people because you suddenly find that you're enemies exactly um so there there have been a number that I've heard but this this I thought was a, a really 
really fun okay. piece of information to work with. Interesting stuff that you stumble across. That's really cool. Um, we have a couple of viewer questions coming through. We just got some new ones. Um, Kathy Valentine wants to know, how many more books will you write in The Crew Hunters? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Something happened. I lost your words. Oh, sure. No problem. Um, I just actually sent it through. So it says, how many more books will you write in The, in the Crew Hunters? Do you have an idea? Um, I know that there, there will be the three um, next year. And let's see, the, the first one is a cruise ship having to do with the Caribbean and a uh, piano bar hostess yep. who winds up with different things happening. And then the mm -hmm. second one takes place in Alaska, Alaskan cruises. And the third one is Mississippi cruise and has to do with the story I just told you. Um, and they're all owned, all these cruise ships are owned by Celtic American lines and they specialize in refurbishing mm -hmm. uh, very old ships or mm -hmm. in paddle wheeler. And um, it's, it's uh, been fun because while doing that, I've looked up all of the cruise ships, the ocean liners and everything that yeah. uh, started with these old ships huh. so they could be based on something real. That's neat. You... And of course, yeah, Go ahead. it's it's fun to imagine all these cruises. Actually, the one is taken from the very first one is taken from the fact that a friend of uh, <laughs> mine and I, Florida, one of the things I do this year, Florida Romance Writers does a cruise every other year and I'm a member of that group and I'm always with that group when we do our conferences. So yeah. we had been on one of our work cruises and wound up being very good friends with the piano bar host. Oh, awesome. So he turned into a she. <laughs> and uh That's great. But it was a fascinating person. So definitely made for a good character. Yeah. Uh, did you come across any haunted cruise line ship stories in your research? You know, when I was on one, I didn't get into one, but I, I love the, I've actually, excuse me, I have friends down here called the Peace River Ghost Trackers, mm -hmm. and they do a lot of the ghost investigations, and I did the Queen Mary with them when I was out in California, and that was uh, absolutely fascinating because they had the entire bowels of the ship to themselves with the one guard who was taking them around. Oh, wow. Um in the pool area where the murder took place and oh, and it's wow. kind of you know the ghost stories are very sad because there was a gentleman who had gotten one of the workers on the ship had been down in the engine room and one of the doors had closed and it closed right on him so of course he is haunting the queen mm -hmm. mary um and it's uh it was kind of funny too because i had my youngest daughter i had a son he had a friend and my youngest daughter had one of her college roommates at the time and they wound up being parted. And as soon as they were parted, of course, uh, Saxon, my daughter's friend, is a total total coward, way worse than any girl I've ever met. <laughs> telling her. Uh, but, oh, my God, this is it. This is where the young people get, mar you know, get murdered. They get lost. They wind up off by themselves, and that's when they get murdered. And uh, they also had the ship set up for Halloween because, like many other good enterprising places, they do a – or walk through for Halloween, right. you know, a haunted ship. Oh. So they came across as they were lost. They came across all the zombies and corpses and everything That's else. And finally found their way back to us and stayed with us the rest of the evening. <laughs> that sounds great. Um, are there characters from your series that your fans are always asking about, like that they want you to bring back? Are there any characters that are really super favorites? There's one character in particular that I'm asked about a lot, and I have not, um, uh, Cap Cafferty and Quinn, and then also, but this is from an old series. Uh, years ago, I did a vampire series, is uh, mm -hmm. Beneath the Blood Red Moon, Deep Midnight, When Darkness Falls, The Awakening, and I'm going to blank on a couple of titles, but there was a vampire in there named Lucian, and oh. I've been asked if Lucian can come back. So I, w I would like to bring Lucian back one day. Yeah. Awesome, guys. Now you know. <laughs> I'm sure someone here is like, Lucian, yes. Can't wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> now, um... I, 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 I was just going to say, one of my favorite characters that I've uh, created is Jackson Crow. I like Jackson a lot. Yeah. I would love to find the right actor to play Jackson. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What do you think is the hardest part of writing a book? Do you think it's the beginning, the middle, or the end? I'm sorry, what is what? 
What do you think is the hardest part of writing a book? The beginning, the middle, the end? Oh, what do you find most challenging? It was the whole thing. Usually for me, it's either a person or a place that starts me. And so I'm really excited. I can get, get mm -hmm. something down before I even begin to... Um, I, do, I do always write a synopsis does not mean you have to follow it just means you have something an idea of where you're going um, but I again it's always a something um, or a person uh, that, that gets me going and so that part I think is the easiest like the first of course I'm talking about three or four pages <laughs> and then after that uh, it gets difficult I think that the I think the end can sometimes be difficult because you're trying to make sure you picked up all the threads Mm -hmm. um, that you didn't like, you know, forget to solve something in there that was important. Mm -hmm. And the middle, I guess, is harder because you know you have to get to the end. <laughs> so maybe that's it. I, I don't know. I think if uh, most people I know who are steadily writing really have a good concept of what they need to do to get a book done. And um, I'm not one of those people who waits for inspiration. You know, I, I'm a big proponent of that if you sit down and work you'll have something, you may have to fix it, but you will have something. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty much a day-to-day -day thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was the first book that you ever published? Can you tell us a little bit about that and the journey working on that book? It was called When Next We Love, and I had been, uh, I had been working, when we got out of school, I was working in dinner theater and doing some commercial work. And by the time we had three children, it was too expensive for me to go to work. And I had always wanted to write. And my husband said it was a good time to try. And first couple of things I had published were actually short horror stories in Black Cat and Twilight Zone. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it was kind of funny at the time, too, because um, a lot of the category books, it really did have a lot of rules to them at the time. Uh, she was, the heroine was supposed to be kind of pure. Uh, she shouldn't have ever been divor divorced. She probably shouldn't have ever been really in love before. Mm -hmm. um, the hero was usually somebody a little bit older. Yeah, you know, and a lot of times it was somebody who, a young woman went to be a governess or something else in Europe, and she met the older man who owned the French vineyard and wound up marrying him somehow. And it's kind of like I never really understood what this young beautiful creature wanted with this older vineyard guy to begin with and then they didn't seem to have like dreams of their own so right about that time they came out with a, a couple of new category lines that were i think just much more realistic to how life was going yeah. and so the first thing i wrote was the first book that i had published was when next we love and it was adele ecstasy romance mm -hmm. it was a while ago i'm scared to say how long ago <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting, though, that you, you know, you do notice that in, like, romances and things like that. It's like, this female character is just... You know, oh, yeah. We've, we have changed. In, in the time I've been in yeah, it, we've, changed we've changed constantly. And I think, I, mm -hmm. I, think it's, I think it's wonderful and it's necessary because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, a historical is still a historical, but even the way they're written is slightly different. Um, yeah. Or the, the different things we feel or think or would put into them. And I think now, because um, I really wanted to do historical uh, romances too, and I'd grown up reading yeah. Victoria Hall, mm -hmm. Mary Stewart, Dorothy Eden, uh, Rebecca, mm -hmm. all, all this kind of like these wonderful yes. books. And I, I wanted that opportunity. So I had yeah. actually written the historicals first, but uh, I didn't get them published till after the contemporary. Mm -hmm. And what about collaborating with other authors? Have you, you know, worked on anthologies with other authors? What was, what was oh, that like? Yeah, I've done a number of anthologies. We do a number of them for thriller writers. Um, uh, I have one in the X Files books that X Files book that is out now. Um, I think it's called. Yeah. Oh, I just blinked on what it's. I can't believe the stuff I'm blinking on. Uh, but that's uh, Jonathan Mayberry did the. Uh, editing an intro on it and that was a tremendous amount of fun getting to take Dana and Scully and putting them where I wanted <laughs> and making them do what I wanted them to do. Um, as far as actually working with someone, I have a book coming out sometime that uh, I wound up doing with a young actor named Chad Michael Murray who's actually an very, very talented writer 
and uh, I have something with him that'll be coming out. I don't know when. And then I've worked with a friend named John Land, and we have uh, a young adult coming out next year in association with the NASA space program. So we're very excited about that. Cool. Is that your first I, it's young funny. adult that you saw? Um, pardon me? Is it the, it's a young adult book you said? Yeah. Yeah, and it is. It's, it's the first time I've, I have worked with young adults. Um, very, very excited. And I, I'm really excited about it. The uh, editor involved with these is just one of those guys who loves NASA, and he arranged for us all to go to Goddard yeah. Space Center and work with uh, a lot of the people there and, mm -hmm. and get in the clean suits and go in the clean room and do all that type of thing. So it was was fascinating, wonderful experience. And I'm um, yeah, yeah. looking forward to that. And I believe it's going to be a series where working on that but it's I do think it's oh, I think the problem that John and I had at first is we're both we're both really nice people and it's hard for, I mean at least we think we're nice but it's hard for either of us to say I don't think that paragraph worked and we I think we have finally gotten to where we can say okay well but what if we did this or what if we change that up a little bit you know we're able to say that to each other now which is I think important and I've also done one story <coughs> Excuse me, an anthology that's out right now too, with 1330 books called Phobias, and I'm thrilled mm -hmm. to death because my oldest son has his first alone story in that one. He wrote a story with me years ago for a novelist ink book called Cast of Characters. So, yeah, but you awesome. you really need the right personality to work together. Yeah, absolutely. So when you're not writing and collaborating and doing all these you know fun author events and Things like that. What are some things that you love to do on your off time? On my off time, I really do love the things that one does traveling. Uh, one of my favorite yeah. things about Key West Fest is that I'm a diver, and oh, their nice. publicity woman, a really lovely woman, used to work for Mel Fisher. And so mm -hmm. if you come down for Key West Fest, she will make arrangements for you to get out on one of the Mel Fisher treasure ships. So oh, awesome. diving the one of the banks of uh, bank bank of Spain, uh, one of the Atosha digs was just incredible, um, and it was really funny too because they kept telling me I would definitely find something, and I'm down there, and one of the the super guide I had with me is pointing, and I'm like, oh look sand, and then he points again, I'm like, oh look sand, and then he took my hand and put it on a piece of pottery, so that way I could say I found a piece of pottery. <laughs> So, yeah. but it, it was just an amazing experience. It was great. Yeah. I do, I really do okay. love the things that you get to do when you travel. So, yeah. and I, let me see, I'm a ballroom dancer. Um, wow. I know I like a lot of things. <laughs> I'm learning so That's much a, about you. <laughs> uh, That's amazing. It's, do it's you fun, have a yeah. Favorite, yeah. Do you have a favorite book of all time? I know that that's like, that's a tough question, but is there any one book that you keep reading? I don't have a favorite, favorite one favorite book. I have a lot of favorite books. I can reread anything by Edgar Allan Poe. I truly love Poe. I think he was so good. Mm -hmm. Another one that is absolutely one of my favorites is A Tale of Two Cities. I have read that oh, yeah. several times. Um, God, there's so many good books out there that uh, yeah. just... Just things that are, I was a theater major, so I read a lot of Shakespeare, and I still, I know that sounds weird, but I still enjoy reading Shakespeare. I love the language. I love, like, imagining how it uh, sounded at the time, how it sounds now. Yeah. Plays. I still love plays. Go to plays anytime I can. Oh, oh excellent. Music. Love music. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, Connor yeah. says, here's, here's one more question that we're going to take from our viewers. Um, Connor says, you wrote your first book in 1982. Has the way that you write books changed? What's your writing process like then and now? Sorry if I dated you. Oh, but Connor, thanks for bringing up that year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, uh, let's see, how's my, pro my, I'm really, it's funny because I did start writing with uh, a pack of young children in the house because I have five all yeah. together. And they do the, the oldest are within six years of each other. So they were very young and all in the house when I started writing. And I'm still super grateful to them because I feel like they kind of made my life a Dr. Seuss book because I can write 
in a plane, in a train, in a car, going far. You know, it's just, I was so used to commotion and things going on. I literally can work anywhere when I need to. And in fact, I like some type of commotion or something going on. Um, music, uh -huh. television. So I, I like something going on around me. Uh, I think as far as um, publishing itself has changed so drastically in the 30 years. Mm -hmm. Because I remember uh, before I sold it, when you got a rejection, it was a mimeograph. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people even know what a mimeograph is anymore. You know, and you were, if you got a rejection notice that somebody had actually signed and said something to you, that was very exciting. Yeah. That hasn't changed. A lot of the people I know are like, oh my God, I got a really good rejection today. And so, <laughs> so that's true. Sometimes, and it's, yeah, writing, <laughs> writing is always going to be, whether these days, or, or one thing I would tell anybody who is working out there is if you, it's perfectly legitimate to go indie, it's perfectly, perfectly legitimate to go small pub, and it's wonderful yeah. to go with a traditional publisher. The thing is, if you do choose to do it yourself, uh, think of the word publish. Publish means line edit, edit, proof. Uh, you know, have it in, uh, just formatting can be a nightmare. Make sure it's in a good format and then make sure, you know, somebody who can uh, do some good cover work for you, who can do some good marketing for you, because that's one thing that hasn't changed. It's still marketing. It's a marketing. Yeah. Thing. Although, of course, I do think it's fun that nowadays we get a lot more books that come out there and become really big because of word of mouth. So that that's. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely to me one of the brilliant things about today is. A book that's a wonderful gem that a traditional publisher might not have known where to place uh, will come out yeah. indie and enough people will start to read it and word of mouth it will go around and we'll all get to yeah. read the wonderful gem that's come out that we might not have otherwise. Yeah. So you may have to slice yeah. through a lot too. That's the other problem. Yeah. Oh, that's exactly. not a, the first one isn't a problem. I'm sorry. That is the problem <laughs> is that, that people do get too excited and they do book, put books up too quickly without really making sure it's their best work and that it's you know, quote unquote, published, not just thrown up on Amazon. Yeah, that's very true. There's a, there's so much out there and there's so many avenues, but sometimes the quality. Uh, is absolutely. Different now with, mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, we'll do one more question. So this is from Kate. Um, it's kind of about your process. She says, once you have a rough draft, how long does it take to turn it into the final edit? Do you kind of have like a t amount of time on lockdown or is it always different? It's it's usually it's different, but I I always have a friend read something. I mean, I, I have a wonderful editor. I really get editor. No matter what I did, she would have something that she would point out that she would like changed uh, in general, uh, which I don't mind at all. Um, when somebody sees something in a book that's a weakness and they tell you and you can fix it, that's great. Yeah. Um, and I, I work. Uh, I love uh, love working with Liz and, and the staff over there too because I, I think they're very good. <laughs> But I always make Hi. someone I know read the book. Uh, before. I mean, I don't mean just anyone I know off the street. You know, I have a friend who's definitely a huge reader yeah. read for me uh, so that I get a good concept of anything I might have missed. Uh, as far as like process goes, I have a tendency to kind of get in the middle of a book and then go back and adjust the beginning to where I have found the middle has taken me and then usually yeah. go from there. And then again, I once I'm I'm finished to my satisfaction, I will have other people telling me what they think. And of course, it's, there's one thing they always say that I love. The best editors always say. In fact, I remember I had one who was probably one of the just she's the cutest editor in the world because you would get a revision letter from her and it would say, "Oh my God, this is wonderful. This is so good. This is like you know the best thing since the hula hoop." I just have a few notes, and then there would be about 20 pages. <laughs> but she already made you so happy you didn't mind doing the you know doing the notes so um and but they usually always say too yeah like i have a suggestion for you here but please remember it's your book so exactly. um that's the best when you and really everybody's trying to make the best possible book right exactly well it was great to have you on again it's always a pleasure and it's unfortunately oh, the end of our run here but um, everybody check out um, her latest, All Hallows Eve, A Crew of Hunters novella in the 1001 Dark Nights anthology. Thank you so much for joining us again. And thank you to the viewers for asking great questions. Thank you. It was yeah. great to see y'all. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.